concept is actually rather broad. We try to have really a holistic approach, a system approach on that. We are working on one side on the, on the source, then also on the contrast mechanisms, and on top of it, of course, on the detectors, how we could actually improve the detectors. And to have really an improvement, you need to work on the whole chain. And that's actually the project we are doing here. So we are working on one side on miniaturized, fast, and programmable X-ray sources. This is possible due to the fact that we have access to these uh, carbon nanotubes, and therefore we can have pulsed sources with rather high frequencies. We do have excellent single photon solid X-ray detectors, and of course, probably the most intriguing part is that we do have now access, with help of the group of Professor Hans von Kennel, on a new conversion layer, which enables uh, now us to marry the CMOS technology with this conversion layer and therefore to get an improvement in the X-ray detector technology. And on top of that, we are working also on new contrast mechanism to get an improvement of the signals we are getting out of it. So on one side, we are working really on these sources. We have not anymore one big source. We try to have pixelated sources, sequence of sources. With, therefore, we do have also a new degree of freedom that exists already, as you know, for example, Siemens introduced now such a system, but not with such small sources. So on one side, we would like to have large area, pixelated X-ray sources, also the possibility to have sources which can be pulsed, that will enable us later on also to have 3D X-ray images. Then, of course, highly efficient sensors, especially for medical application, because this is actually the, the key point if you would like to improve the X-ray techniques, you have to reduce the dose, and energy-resolved X-ray image detection. So, if you are looking into that, you see we do have a rather large degree of freedom in the setup. We can modulate the X-ray sources and therefore we do have access to some kind of tough X-ray techniques, similar to the techniques we are using in, with lasers. So, we defined two different uh, fields of application. On one side, uh, the non-destructive testing and the medical imaging as a topic for this project. So the source is actually a miniaturized source and therefore we do need the know-how about packaging layering and also about disposing these carbon nanotubes and here you see we have also nanostructure, microstructured anodes and cathodes and here you see actually the arrays which can be nicely grown today and we can get well defined cold emitters and therefore we don't have this thermal load on one side and the other side we have also the possibility to be much faster with less thermal load. Of course, if you like to do something like that, you do have to solve a lot of packaging problems. You need something which is uh, UHV compatible, very low pressure, and of course low leakage. Otherwise it doesn't work, and you have to test that on very small compartments, which is quite tricky. So we developed the setup, which is now already existing. We used micropyranis in a cavity, and we put our carbon nanotubes there to really test under real conditions and not just under synthetic conditions because we were afraid that due to the high surface volume ratio of carbon nanotubes we might run into additional problems. We also already characterized the emission properties of these cold emitters. We do have first results on that and we also put different layers to do the sealing so we tested different sealing techniques. We already get uh, the microgrids on top of the, of the cold emitters and we also tested already 
the diamond windows as a van end window on which you will then have the departure of the X-rays. Size of your silicon pillar to get this very nice growth? Yes, you can change that, and uh, depending on the size, of course, you will change the strain field and so on. There exist optimal sizes, and they're also, uh, of course, correlate with the growth conditions. But today, we do have in a group of Hans, together with Claudio, really models on which we can work, we can model this stuff. It's quite nice, very nice. Thank you.